Hey guys, hello everyone. This is International Master Asaf Givon here. It's good to see you all back. Today I wanted to present to you a game of Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against Fabiano Caruana with the black pieces. So since the match is um, taking place right now in London, a lot of people uh, were debating prior to the match and during the match who has the better chances. So at the time of the recording of this video, we have two draws taking place. In both of them, in one of the games, Carlson had the advantage but didn't manage to win. In one of them, Fabiano Caruana had the advantage but failed to uh, to win. So I decided, uh, I thought it would be interesting to present kind of two perspectives. So one game in which Carlson has won and shown his abilities, or let's say his opponents to outplay his opponents in a long uh, game. And the second one would be a game where Caruana actually prevailed and managed to show his skills. I always uh, seen Caruana as a more scientific type of player, always calculates a lot, tries to search for the absolute best move. Carlson, I would say, is a more practical player. He tries to put as many problems to his opponents as possible. He's playing very psychologically, trying to play for small advantages and trying to outplay his opponent in a very long battle. So in this game, Carlson playing the white pieces. I will apologize in advance if my voice sounds if my voice sounds slightly funnier than usual just because um, I have a small flu and my throat hurts a little bit. I think it should be okay though. So in this game, Carlson was playing the white pieces. In the in the match, he always um, well always it's only one game, but in the game of the match, he opted for one d4. But Carlson is very unpredictable with his first move. He can play nearly anything in the first move. In this game, he chose pawn to e4. I would also like to mention that this game was played in the year 2011, so seven years uh, ago, which means that at this time these two players were fairly young, even younger than they are today, which uh, they are still fairly young. And at that time Carlsen was somewhere around 100 points higher than Caruana in his rating, whereas today the gap between the both of them is very very small maybe a few points so Fabi wins for his favorite e5 castle plays knight e3 knight c6 and we have d4 the so-called uh, scotch opening carlson is not actually participating in a lot of uh, scotch uh, uh, game these days he normally prefers to go for the Rui Lopez or the Italian game these days, which are the two most popular options in this position. So his choice of going uh, d4 might have came as a slight surprise for Caruana. Caruana took on d4, knight takes d4, bishop to c5. So this is probably the most popular move uh, these days. Also the move knight f6 is very popular. But Caruana want to keep things simple. In this position, Carlsen shows the move knight xc6, which is one of the three main lines here. Knight xc6 was originally introduced by Garry Kasparov, if I'm not mistaken, in his match against Karpov. This was one of the first times ever that a player at this caliber played this variation. So his idea was to play for Black's slightly spoiled structure after this move. I would also like to mention that the moves in this position, the moves bishop e3 and knight b3 are also very playable and have been practiced in thousands of games, probably. So knight takes c6. So at this point, Caruana took on c6 with a b-pawn towards the center. Carlsen played a normal move, bishop to d3, developing his bishop and getting ready to castle. At this point came a little a little opening subtlety so 
a normal move for black would be to try and develop his knight on g8. So, for example, a move like knight f6 would appear to be logical, and it's and it's not bad in itself. It's just that then the black queen might be stuck in the long run in the long run on d8. So, what Caruana has in mind here is this nice subtle move queen h4, which is what he played. Obviously, Carlson is not going to fall for the trick of uh, checkmate. So he played queen to e2, developing his queen in the process. But now, black can develop his knight without hindering the development of his queen. So, a nice move there by Caruana. The next few moves are very normal. White plays knight c3, black castles. White plays bishop e3, developing his pieces. You might notice that white is still white still didn't commit his king to any kind of castling so it means that he is still keeping his flexibility he might castle short but he might also castle long so he keeps Caruana still guessing of what he's going to do which is a nice strategy at this point Caruana's bishop on c5 is hanging so he chooses to deal with it by moving bishop to b6 which is a nice little uh, move because now if white chooses to exchange those bishops this would be this would go just right to black's hands because he would recapture towards the center once again actually opening up the open a file for his rook and also improving his pawn structure so there is really no sense in doing that at this point carlson ran out of useful developing moves so he had to decide on which side of the board he wants to castle his king so he chose eventually to castle short which is the more normal move castling along would be possible but a much more sharp option i would say because black does have already a half open b file in front of your king it's not the safest option so once again trying to keep things simple white played Short castles. So far so good. Nothing really special happened. Both sides are developing their pieces. So black plays the move pawn to d5. A very sensible move. Threatening first of all to fork the white pieces on d4. But also getting ready to develop his light square bishop from c8. Carlson at this point took on d5. At this point came an interesting decision by Caruana. He chose to play the, let's say, not the obvious move, which was pawn to xd5, trying to fix uh, black's pawn structure. So, in my opinion, um, the reason Caruana did, did not go for this is probably that he either felt that these pawns could be slightly exposed in the long run, or my second guess would be that he just saw this concrete variation that follows bishop takes b6 pawn takes b6 and in this position there is one very specific move which gi uh, gives white the advantage which is queen to e5 hitting the pawn on c7 but with a much more subtle point than this the point is that after black for example plays a move like c6 trying to defend that pawn white has the move g3 using the fact that the queen has to protect the knight on e7 so the only square she has to do so is f6 and now white can just take on f6 and pl and he is quite happy with his position he has a small but stable advantage thanks to his better pawn structure so Karana probably seeing all of this decided to take with the knight so this means that his structure on the queen side remains uh, pretty bad, but as compensation black gains quite a lot of activity as compensation White now played bishop to d2 a very sensible move So he doesn't want to allow black to spoil his own pawn structure and he also doesn't want to take on d5 Since it would only help black to actually Kind of um, get his pawn structure intact so bishop d2 was played Black played bishop d4, also a very sensible move, activating his bishop. You might see that the black bishop is a multi-purpose piece, he is attacking on this diagonal, but now also on the other diagonal. 
right now it's decided to develop one of his let's say last probably last undeveloped piece into the game is a1 rook he decided to play rook a to e1 putting a little battery of a queen and a rook on the e file a sensible move which is also interesting because white now does allow black to take this knight on c3 which would spoil white's pawn structure but this would cause black to lose too much time so white would recapture with the pawn hitting the black bishop let's say the bishop retreats to its initial square and because black lost so much time in his operation of uh, spoiling white's uh, structure white maintains the better position here because he has the more active pieces for example queen to f3 might look like a nice move hitting the pawn on c6 and while both both sides has very bad pawn structures still white maintains the advantage because he is better developed and better positioned so Caruana did not didn't really want to go for this he played the move knight b4 a very sensible move trying to eliminate white's strong bishop on d3 please notice that if white tries to move that bishop away to e4 which might look like a sensible move at first glance this might run into the move bishop to a6 uh, skewering the white pieces along the long diagonal so this is the part of the game when things started getting much more concrete so Carlson for was thinking for a while and essentially decided uh, to play a very um, concrete move he didn't want to allow black to take his bishop so he played this little move queen to e4 practically forcing the exchange of queens because the black queen is under attack but but if the queen tries to move away black will get badly checkmated so queen takes e4 and this allows the white bishop to escape just on time when the move bishop a6 that Caruana has now played can be met with knight e2 basically the move knight e2 might look like a strange move because it's self-pinning the white knight but now two of black's pieces are under attack so the move bishop c5 is forced in order to protect the bishop and also the knight and in the next couple of moves Carlson is going for a very big operation of depriving uh, black of his um, very great activity in this position so a3 first of all driving this knight very active knight on b4 away knight d5 was played and now white also played the move pawn to b4 also driving the active bishop on c5 further away bishop to d6 this was in my opinion one of the most critical points in this game white has now played pro what i consider to be the star move of this game in this position basically there's nothing wrong about black's position you might even consider black's position to be superior because the white knight on e2 is practically uh, pinned and cannot move but carlson is going to prove that this is not the case he just played the move knight to d4 basically giving up his rook on f1 so Carana took it king takes f1 so in exchange for um, the material that white was sacrificing he got first of all he got to untangle his pieces for their pinned positions now the black pawn on c6 is badly hanging and is most likely is going to fall black played the move knight to b6 knight takes c6 so white's compensation is basic is is based on the fact that it's pretty much it's not easy for black to activate his rooks you see this knight on c6 is controlling a lot of vital squares not allowing the black rooks to be too comfortable in their positions black played now the move rook f to e8 a very sensible move trying to activate the f rook into the game putting some pressure also against the bishop on e4 so now once again Carlson is playing very much to his style as I already said because uh, <laughs> not Kasparov but Carlson is actually a, a very universal player he can play very well in sharp type of positions 
He can also play very well in the very quiet types of positions. And in this game, he really shows some very Karpovian abilities to fight against the opponent's pieces, which was probably the very best trademark of former world champion Anatoly Karpov. He now plays a very nice move, pawn to a4, threatening to kick this knight on b6 away from its position, and also activating white 3 versus 2 majority on the queen side. Very, very nice move. And this move is backed up by the tactical point that if black just captures this pawn on a4, then we have the little tactic 97 check with a discovered attack against the rook on a8. And then after, for example, bishop takes knight, bishop takes rook, rook takes bishop, rook takes on e7, white maintains uh, quite a nice advantage in the end game thanks to his much more active rook on e7 and black weak pawns along the 7th rank. So this is pretty much unacceptable for black. So he decided just to play the move king f8, a sensible move, trying to get his king closer to the center of the board. White played the move a5, hitting the knight, knight to c4, attacking the white bishop on d2. And now also a nice little touch of Carlsen, kind of showing his, his class. He plays the move bishop to c1. As you can see, the bishop on c1 is completely um, limiting the movements of the knight on c4. So he makes sure that the knight on c4 is not going to participate anytime soon in any active operations. And you, you will see later on that this would be a very critical point in, in the game that the knight on c4 doesn't have too many squares to move to. Black played the move pawn to a6. So at this point I think it's it's the part of the game where Fabiano basically started feeling very uncomfortable about his position. Even though his position is objectively quite okay and I'm sure that if you would just put an engine for example in this position it would say that the position is maybe around around equal, maybe slightly better for white, nothing too dramatic. But the position is extremely uncomfortable for black to play. And this is one of Carlson's main um, characteristics in his uh, chess games, is the ability to make the opponent uncomfortable and uncertain of his moves. And in such cases, the opponent is much more likely to make mistakes, which is just what happened. White, now play the move f4 which is a sensible move trying to limit also the movements of this bishop and also giving the white king a square to be further activated into the center of the board. So let, we can call it a little improving move. Also taking away the square from the black knight potentially on e5. So basically you can see that the white strategy is pretty much revolved all around limiting the movements uh, of the black pieces. Now came probably the most critical mistake in this game, probably the only mistake that Caruana played in this game, but when you play against a player like Carlsen, one mistake um, usually is, is uh, <laughs> there is no way back from such mistakes. He played essentially a sensible move, which is rook to e6, just to realize that after the move bishop d5, a very simple move, Probably Caruana missed this whole idea that uh, Carlsen had in mind. Uh, and suddenly the knight on c4 is trapped. Black actually resigned after the move rook f6 and rook to e4. The, the knight is simply lost and once uh, the, the black knight is lost, black is basically being left uh, with a position where he has the material disadvantage as well as a very bad position overall, so he saw no purpose in uh, continuing the game. Going back to the critical position, Black did have one very specific resource that could maintain the equality for the time being, which is knight to e3, a very tactical move. I'm also guessing that at this point maybe Caruana was already in time trouble, which can explain why he blundered such an easy, uh, fairly easy detail and also a reason why he failed to see this variation that follows. Knight to e3 check using the fact that the bishop on e4 is slightly hanging, so white has to take with the rook. And then this move bishop takes on f4 comes. 
So um, basically securing the rook and the bishop. And after the move rook to f3, bishop takes bishop, bishop to d5, hitting the pawn on f7, pawn to f6. The position remains very complicated. So the material balance on the board uh, the is... Uh, uh, actually, black still has the advantage. He has a rook uh, versus uh, the knight. But the knight on c6 is so well placed that actually the position is probably around equal still at this point. Nothing. The game is still ahead of us. It would be very interesting to see how the game could have continued had Caruana played this. But he lost immediately once again after the move rook to e6. And he resigned at this position at move number 27. So a pretty much, um, a pretty much uh, typical Carlson game. From the opening stage, he put he, he didn't try to go for a very big advantage in the opening. You have seen the position was pretty much equal throughout the game, but he kept putting some little problems, some little, let's say, un, um, little difficult questions for his opponent to answer. And slowly, he gained a dominant position, even though it was never so bad for black, but definitely very uncomfortable until the very big mistake came. Uh, this is many times the way Carlson's games are being uh, executed. Play for small advantages, make your opponent uncomfortable, and basically wait for his mistake. That's, uh, I think, Carlson's uh, one of his big trademarks. So, really ho hope you enjoyed this game. I certainly uh, enjoyed quite a lot seeing this game. It was um, uh, a nice display of power by Carlson, especially that exchange sacrifice on move um, on move number 18 it was pro probably 19 yes this was uh, a really a nice touch of of class by carlson so really thank you guys and see you in the next videos bye bye